Sierra, how do you feel now that you're married? Are you very happy to be married to my precious Marcel? Good morning, Barbara. Of course, I'm so happy to be married to him now. I'm sure you don't need to ask me that. Really? Well, isn't that nice to hear from you? I just wanted to check, that's all. Now, what about the real you? How does it feel to finally have found your prey whom you could suck money from now? What? What are you talking about? I really don't want to say it like that, but I'm very aware that my family and yours are worlds apart. It's almost like the relationship you have with my son is impossible. In the past, a relationship like the one you have with Marcel would have been unthinkable. I'm sorry to interrupt your little speech, but my family is not as poor as you might think. And like you've said, the times have changed and we don't care about what level people are on anymore. How? Are you trying to say that I'm living in the past or something? Excuse me? I didn't say anything like that. What are you trying to say? I know that you probably hate me, and that's why you're talking to me this way. Does it not hurt you to talk to an old woman like that? Let's stop this right now. Barbara, what are you on about? What did I say to you that made you so angry? I was just agreeing with you about how times have changed, and that people nowadays don't have the same views as they did before. Oh, I see. So you're really trying to say that I'm the one who's wrong. I'm sure you want to call me some old-fashioned hag, right? What? I'm telling you that none of what I said meant anything like that. I have to deal with you insulting me and breaking my heart again, but that's fine. All I have to do is put up with it and everything will be okay. Come on, Barbara. Will you please listen to me? I wasn't saying anything that was meant to hurt you. Not at all. Did anything I say make you upset? Is that so? By the way, your present from your wedding should be in the mail soon. What? Okay, thank you. The present is for me? That's right. It's for you, Sierra. I'll be coming over to pick up Marcel for dinner when we go back to my place. We'll be having a meeting with the rest of the family that attends. Am I supposed to go to that meeting too? Do you think you're part of my family when you've only been married to my son for a month? I think you're jumping the gun. Give it some time and I might start seeing you as something more. That's what I thought you'd say. It's not like we've had a wedding yet. So I haven't met the rest of Marcel's family in person. Although I'd appreciate it if he introduced me to them. I'm not sure that day will ever come for you, though. Huh? What are you trying to say? You'll be home all day tomorrow, right? Make sure you're there to get the present I've sent you. Understood. I'll keep an eye out for the doorbell. Shara, my heart is full of concern. Have you, perhaps, spoken harshly to my mother once more? The time is near for such speech to end and for you to behave like a good daughter-in-law. My mother's spirit is weighed down by sorrow. A sorrow that your words have brought upon her. Sorrow? Hers? Do tell me. Why is her heart so sad? I assure you, not a single word of spite left my lips in front of her yesterday. What stories has she made up for you? She hasn't given me the specifics of your exchange, true? But it's very uncommon to see her face so clouded with grief. I had hoped. No, I had trusted that you, more than anyone, would try to bridge the gap between you and my mother, not widen it with cold indifference. The thought that you might resent her, or even the idea of her as your mother-in-law, breaks my heart. Marcel, are you serious? Are we really having this conversation, where you take her words as fact and blame me without hearing my version? I swear, on my honor, that I didn't say anything mean to her yesterday. Our conversation only touched on her feelings about me becoming part of the family but she wasn't pleased about it. It is I, actually, who have to mend a heart hurt by rejection. I urge you, don't blame her for being the only one causing this trouble. She's still my mom, right? I'm fully aware of that, Marcel, but this is not about pointing fingers. Rather, it's a plea for you to listen to my account, to comprehend what occurred. Would you do me this kindness? Enough, Shara. I plead with you to quiet down and restrain yourself. Can't you be kind to those who are older than you? So that's how it is then? My words don't count to you? When we see each other again, let's have a sincere talk. I have a lot of things to tell you. Have the steaks made it to your place yet? That's your wedding present. A thousand dollars worth of very nice grass-fed steaks. Make sure to eat all of that by yourself, okay? I'm not eating any of this. Huh? What? I've already gone and thrown all of that steak out. You're lying, right? So you didn't eat any of it? Instead throwing it out like that? You went and threw out the present I was giving you to celebrate your wedding when it came around. I sure did. What the hell was with that, Barbara? You thought I'd actually eat steaks that were in as bad of a state as those were? Did you actually throw out $1,000 worth of steaks in the trash? I did. 
None of it was worth trying to eat anymore because they were all rotten and covered in mold. Please do not ever send me something like that ever again. Barbara, I understand that you don't like me at all, but that right there was just dangerous and caused me a whole lot of headaches. I'm shocked by what you've done. The fact that you say the present was some kind of message of my hate towards you. Do you really hate me so much that you would go and say that about me? What? So you're telling me none of that was done as a way of showing me how much you hate me? Are you listening to me, Barbara? Hey, I want you to stop all of that right now. This time, you've gone and made my mom cry by what you did and said. What the hell do you think you're doing? What do you think I'm doing? I'm just trying to keep myself from becoming food poisoned. That meat that your mom sent to me was all rotted and covered in black mold, so I went and put it all straight into the trash can. Huh? You threw that all away? That was a present from my mom for our wedding. Worth $1,000, you idiot. You're going to tell me you didn't even bother trying some of that steak before you throwing it in the trash? Hold on now, Marcel. I don't even think that steak was worth $500 when added up. You're the worst. Shara, go and apologize to my mom right now for all of that. I can see you really enjoy being that upset with me so one-sidedly. But are you even going to bother listening to anything I have to say today? My mom has been nothing but kind to you. And this is how you're going to treat her? Why do you think it's okay for you to act that way? I understand that she's doing a pretty good job faking the person she really is with you. She's good at faking herself to everyone. Actually, you are just terrible. The worst wife I've ever seen. If you're not going to go and apologize to her right now, then we're done here. I am not going to forgive you. How about you listen to me first? I will tell you all you need to know about the truth surrounding her. I know the truth. And it's not looking good for you. My mom was doing her very best to show you her kindness by sending all that high quality meat. And you threw it all away? My mom is the best woman in the world. And yet you treat her like garbage. Did you even stop to have a look at what was inside those boxes? What? You never took a look inside those boxes, did you? You're at work right now, so of course you wouldn't have been able to see what kind of presents she sent me yet. Right now, you are acting all one-sided with me like I'm already the problem here, even though you haven't seen what's happened for yourself. I guess I haven't been home to have a look inside of what she sent you. But she would never send you anything crazy besides the meat she said she sent, right? That's what you'd want to think. And that's why you can't find it in your heart to trust your very own wife. All you want to hear is what your mom is telling you. Like the mama's boy, you really are. Well, I'm going to tell you the truth about her. The harsh truth. That meat that she sent me was all spoiled, completely rotten. It was mostly covered in mold with little maggots wriggling around in them. Also, some of the pieces were covered in jalapeno, which I'm allergic to. What? Are you sure? There is no way I'd be able to eat any of that meat, right? I'm sure you wouldn't either if you'd seen it. The moment I opened the box, I could just tell everything was spoiled by the way it smelled like roadkill. And that's when I knew this was yet another one of her attempts to show me just how much she hates me. Your mom has been taking everything the two of us talk about and making it out to seem like I'm the one who's bullying her. That's why she's always coming to you crying about it in hopes that you'll want to punish me or leave me. You're kidding, right? Why would my mom of all people be doing things like that? She has no reason to be doing that to you. Your mom happens to hate me a whole lot more than you could ever imagine. That's why she's trying her dang hardest to get the two of us to separate. My mom would actually want that though. But she's always going on about how much she loves you to me. She is just putting on a performance in order to make you think she's been up to nothing this whole time. Her goal is to make herself look as though she's not had any part in making you start to hate me. Remember how before you and I got married, she always seemed like she hated the idea of us being a married couple? I thought she was always supporting you becoming my wife. And put it straight, she was only doing that in order to keep you on her side all in order so that you would never be able to notice how much she truly despised me for who knows what reasons. But if you could see what's really going on, you'd see that nothing she's been saying to you about her feelings is true, especially when it comes to me. What? So she's just been putting on a face for me this whole time? Haven't you ever noticed that there are times a jab at me will slip through? Like how sometimes she might suggest you get married to someone else, or how things might be different for you if you were with so-and-so. I'm sure you have, but have been kind enough to point out that I'm the right woman for you and that I'm younger than you, so your mom should be happy with the woman you married. 
I'm sure you never see what she's saying at those points in time as being jabs at me, but they are. You just seem to think that she means nothing by it at all and move on. Wait a minute. Everything I'm hearing from you is a little hard for me to understand. How was any of that a jab at you? To be honest, it doesn't really matter if you understand or not. Just be aware that your mom really does hate me and she's made that very clear to me. And for a little while, she's been doing her best to get you to start hating me, too. She's really been wanting for the two of us to get a divorce that badly? Why would she want that of her own son? I'm not sure the reason why, but from everything I've had to endure from her so far, she really does not want me around her family at all. Really, it's like I'm trying to battle a beast at times when talking to her. I cannot believe this. The fact that my own mom has been thinking of us that way. I'm sure it really is hard to believe considering that this is your first time hearing about it. Once you get home today, I'll show you everything. All the proof. Do you have that much proof though? How about you just come home and find out for yourself? I'd much rather you see for yourself what she's been up to instead of complaining about me from your office chair. But I already told my mom that I'd be going to her house after work. Right there. That's her trying to get to you first, in order to play with your head before you can see what I have to share. What do you mean? Well, if you get home even later in the day after she's gone and lied to you about what really happened, the meat will have gone bad, and you'll be believing everything she said for sure. Right? Then I'll have no way to get you to see the truth clearly and will be stuck having the two of you hate me even more. It's all a part of her plans, Marcel. I see. I would have never thought this was something she'd been up to. Today, I want you to come back here first and see the proof, and then you can go over to your mom's house. Alright, I guess they have no other choice but to do that. Now please do that. I'll make sure I have all the proof ready for you to see. Barbara, I have to ask, do you enjoy this game of torture you play at my cost? Enjoy? What game are you talking about, Sierra? Are you trying to hurt me more than you already have? Your presence freezes me to the core. What have I done to deserve such endless hate? Don't be ridiculous, Barbara. The constant bullying, the sneaky plans, all designed to break the sacred bond between your son and me, right? Your accusations confuse me. I don't know what you mean. The steak, Barbara. The one that came in the mail today, smelling of rot and neglect. It was a disgusting thing to send. Rotten? Impossible! That meat was picked with care. A gift meant to close the gaps, not make them bigger. And now to accuse me of such things, to call me a horrible mother-in-law, it hurts me deeply. Today, I'll keep Marcel close and safety of my home. I dread to think of him sharing space with someone like a witch who might cast a spell of silence on him. So be it. What's this? Do you agree to his stay? Yes, let him find comfort under your roof for as long as you want. For Marcel and I are over. The ties that bound us have been cut. There is nothing but emptiness in this place for him now. Speak clearly, what are you saying? It is as you have always said. We are mismatched, our union a mistake. It is only right that our paths split, that we separate our lives from each other. Surely this ends your feud. So it has happened. The end of your union. Maybe it's the best for you both. My concern is only for my son's well-being. Your fate is none of my business. Now Marcel can go and find his own happiness, free from your shadow. Then, will you admit to the poison you've spread, the schemes you've made against me? I claim my innocence. No cruelty was ever meant by me. Yet, it is because of you that we have chosen this breakup. You've hated me all along, haven't you? With our bond broken, you can reveal your true feelings. You are smart, Sierra. It was never a matter of simple dislike, but a hatred so deep I wish you would just disappear. Such confirmation is no shock. I have always known your contempt. You came out of nowhere to take my dear Marcel, to drain his life. I had no reason to like you, but finally he sees the truth. Realizing the wisdom in leaving you behind, my secret efforts have paid off, resulting in the outcome I so eagerly wanted. All your efforts then were intentional? Every mean word, every nasty deed, a planned trick to end our marriage and silence our voices forever. Exactly! From the moment you entered our lives, I longed for a day you would be gone out of my son's world. And the spoiled meat, the rot, the spicy bits, was it all part of your big plan? Was the cost of such betrayal really worth so little? Of course it wasn't. I just took the old box left over from the expensive butcher I ordered my meats from and put some weak old cuts of meat in there I bought at the supermarket. Before sending the box to you, I made sure that while I had the meat sitting out in the sun, to sprinkle jalapeno all over them. I'm sure you were surprised by all of that, right? Oh, I sure was surprised. 
surprised by the lengths you were going to in order to show your hate for me. Barbara, had I actually cooked up and eaten one of those steaks, what would have happened then? Well, my Marcel is very smart, so he'd have never eaten any of that. But just to be on the safe side, I made sure that today he'd be eating dinner at my house. As long as he's safe and healthy, I don't care what you end up doing. That is totally screwed up, Mom. What? It's me, Mom. Marcel. Huh? What? Marcel, weren't you on your way over to the house for the night? I thought you were going to come straight home right after you got out of work. That was my plan as well. But then I found out about how you and Shara had been talking to one another again today. I wanted to see for myself if what Shara was telling me about that present you sent her was true. So I went home before I planned on coming to see you. From the looks of it, that meat that Shara ended up throwing away was all spoiled and looked like the bark on a tree with all that mold. Now, you tell me what the hell is going on here between you two. I think I've come to the conclusion that I can't trust you as my mom anymore. You have it wrong, Marcel. This is a misunderstanding on your end. I never meant for any of this to happen. Sierra has just been setting me up in order to make me look like the problem here. But Marcel, you've already gone ahead and chosen to divorce her, right? I think you can go right ahead and just give up on her now. You understand there's no point in talking to her anymore, right? The only thing I've come to understand now is that you're a monster, Mom. What? I'm the monster? Why am I the monster? No matter how I try and look at it now, you're the only monster among us. This whole time, you have been harassing her and then lying about it to me to make me start getting mad with her as well. I'm shocked by this, Mom. I can't trust you anymore. I'm telling you, you're absolutely wrong about that. You have a total misunderstanding of the situation right now. I'm going to have a talk with Dad about all of this. I'll give Shara her smartphone back now. But you promised me to stop all that crap you've been giving her from now on. She's the most important thing to me. Wait a second. What happened to the two of you getting a divorce? Hello, Barbara. This is Sierra again. I think after everything I've done to show Marcel the real you, he's come back to understanding the truth. He now understands who the true liar has been. Are you kidding me, Sierra? You deceived me like that? Set me up? Lied to me about how you were both getting divorced? Also that I would come out with this truth? I sure did bait you into all this. I had to make sure that you really did hate me that much. And were the real bully in all of this. Marcel was able to find out the truth as well. And I'd say this all turned out perfectly for us. Turned out perfectly for who? Are you messing with me? You hurry up and divorce my Marcel. You are not a part of my family and you never will be. I'm glad to hear nothing but the truth coming from you. And don't worry, because I have no plans of coming near you again. Just like you've been wanting. We will not be family. But Marcel has come around to learning he was in the wrong this whole time by believing what you'd say. And from now on, he will be on my side when it comes to family drama. What? Are you trying to say he's going with you? You're going to steal my Marcel away from me for good. I'm not stealing something that you tossed away, am I? He's moving on with his life around me. And in order to do so, he needs to cut ties to you. I know this whole time you've been trying to push me out of your family for good. But what you've really gone and done is push yourself out, leaving you with nobody. Now, Barbara, have a good one, please. I hope that while you're burning in hell, you get time to munch on some spoiled and moldy steaks. After finding out the shocking truth about his mother, Marcel decided to never eat her food again, cutting off the mother-son connection they had. This act of rebellion affected their whole family, especially his father, who became tired and disappointed. The warmth that Barbara and her husband used to share turned into cold distance, pushing him to the inevitable decision that they had to divorce. Now, they are on the verge of falling apart, becoming nothing but strangers to each other where there used to be closeness. When Barbara heard about the upcoming divorce, her world fell apart. She cried and begged in the empty halls, asking for a change, for a chance. But she couldn't fix anything because nothing she did or said could prove that she was a good wife. Her plans, which were meant to ruin the marriage of her son and daughter-in-law, backfired horribly, making her own husband want to leave her. In the middle of the chaos, something unexpected happened. The troubles helped Marcel and Sierra become closer. The difficulties they faced made their relationship stronger and better. Marcel realized how much his mother had made him doubt his marriage. Together, they started to heal, getting help from couples therapy to deal with the stormy issues of trust and communication. In a surprising turn of events, the very thing that was supposed to break them up became the reason for their growth and unity. 
Sierra, thinking about what they went through, felt thankful for the terrible test her mother-in-law put them through, because it was through these tests that both she and Marcel learned valuable lessons, turning pain into the foundation of a deeper and more lasting love. 